Let's Game Spot. Hello and welcome to Let's Game Spot. I'm your host, Jeff Gerstman. It looks like we're finally settling into our uh, new digs over here at the GameSpot Live Studios, and all of our new savings in time and manpower will be passed directly on to you, the viewer, with another new segment added to your favorite show on gaming. But before we get to that, we have a couple new games for you, including what may be Black Isle Studios' final game, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Brad Shoemaker pairs up with Maximo to take on the Army of Zen. Ricardo Torres briefs you on everything and nothing to do with James Bond 007 Everything or Nothing, and Greg Gustavin sneaks into GameSpot's greatest games of all time with Thief. Finally, right before Tim Tracy's news report and the Trivia Robots Weekly Rebuke, we'll check out an event for Driver 3 with Michelle Rodriguez and Bump Bailey himself, Michael Madsen. I don't care how good Roy Hobbs is, we aren't giving up our spot on the roster to anybody here on Let's GameSpot. First up this week is Black Isle Studios' Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. I know we told you last week that uh, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel was their last game, but uh, we lied. No, Dark Alliance 2 doesn't signal the reopening of Black Isle's doors, but it does signal some good old action rpg in. Back in late 2001, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance combined hack-and-slash dungeon-crawling gameplay with a moderate amount of character customization options and showcased the whole package with some of the best-looking graphics to be seen on the PS2 at the time. Two years later, Dark Alliance 2 takes everything that made the first game good and brings it to the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Unfortunately, while the gameplay remains fun and engrossing, the graphics remain trapped in 2001. Players will be able to choose from five new characters, ranging from a human barbarian to a moon elf necromancer to a dwarven rogue. All combat takes place in real time, and victories are rewarded with standard sums of gold and experience. When you're not fighting and plundering, you can create powerful weapons and gear with Dark Alliance 2's new workshop mode. If this sounds like too much to handle, you can tackle the roughly nine hours of gameplay with a friend via the two-player cooperative mode. For GameSpot's full review and video review of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, check out the game space. Next up this week is Nival Interactive's PC strategy game, Silent Storm. Sure, it sounds like another World War II game for your computer, but this one's different. Think XCOM meets the Dirty Dozen but then cut it down to a dirty half dozen. In the same vein as XCOM or Jagged Alliance, Silent Storm is a turn-based strategy game where you command a small squad in a turn-based strategic environment. You play as either the Axis or the Allies. The game takes you on missions across Europe. For example, as an Allied soldier, you search houses in England, infiltrate factories in Germany, and look for missing scientists in remote regions in Russia. Soon you discover a secret group that's playing both sides of the war. But why? Your crack team of commandos begins with your created character and can be joined by five teammates ranging in six I different class types. Engineer, Grenadier, Medic, Scout, Sniper, and Soldier. Each class has different abilities and unique skills with names like Reduced Recoil, Stealth Run, and Increased Throw Range. Soundstorm features a massive amount of World War II era weaponry, both real and fictitious. You can arm your squad with clubs, knives, pistols, rifles, and submachine guns. If you're looking for more firepower, there's always armored suits called Panzerkleins and a laser gun. Stay tuned to the game space for a full review of the game, or fill the void while you wait with a free demo, more than 70 screenshots, and a handful of movies. Joining me now in the studio is Associate Editor Brad Shoemaker. What's up, Brad? How you doing? Earlier this week, you reviewed uh, Capcom's Maximo and the Army of Zen. Uh, now, believe it or not, we actually had you on the show to talk about the Japanese import version of the, the game back when it was released in September. I remember. Uh, so what are the differences between uh, the Japanese version and the version you reviewed? Well, Jeff, this one's in English. English. I see. Very wonderful. So uh, who is the Army of Zen? Uh, the Army of Zen is basically this mass of crazy clockwork robots that are powered by souls and like to kill people. So what's, what's new in the Army of Zen uh, compared to the first Maximo game? What have they added? Well, they've added a lot of combat upgrades. Uh, you can buy new moves for your sword. Uh, there's also a, kind of a combat hammer that you can get. You can get underwear upgrades. Uh, you remember in the first game you could lose your armor and see your underwear. So you can get vibrating boxer shorts that help you find hidden treasure. Wonderful. Indeed. There's armored boxer shorts, power boxer shorts. Uh, there's there's a lot of, a lot of extra options in the, in the action and the combat that they didn't have in the first game. So uh, what does this game have more of, fun or difficulty? I'd say equal parts of fun and difficulty, they kind of balance each other out. Yeah, because that, that first game was 
hard. I mean, this one, this one is also hellishly hard, but not quite in the same way. This is kind of a, you've got more of a chance here. It's cool. still really tough, but it's, it's, it's rewarding if you can make it. So uh, what final score did you give the game? Uh, 8.4. Why? Because it's a great game. Awesome. Thanks for coming by, Brad. I have a t-shirt over there. Back for another round of previewing fun is senior editor Ricardo Torres. Hey, Ricardo. Hey, Jeff. You got to play EA's uh, multi-platformer, James Bond 007, Everything or Nothing. Uh, why don't you tell us something about it? Like, uh, what's the story to the game? Well, the game actually has an original story uh, that actually would work as one of the films. Uh, cool. They've managed to weave in uh, a lot of ties to the previous James Bond films, like the main villain, who is played by Willem Dafoe, oh. uh, has ties to Max Zorin, who is the villain in The View to a Kill, who's actually his protege and is not real happy about, you know, him dying. Mm. Uh, and you're also going to see Jaws, who was you know, a very big favorite. And it basically revolves around, once again, the world being in danger by a crazy person, in this case, Willem Dafoe, whose name is Nikolai in the game, uh, who's going to unleash nanobots on the world and really mess up technology and, you know, take over. Sure. How's the game play? I mean, uh, a lot of the previous Bond games have been first-person shooters, but this one is third-person, right? Yep, uh, EA just kind of went all crazy with this one. The game has now third-person elements, which is the bulk of the game, which is what we're seeing right now, right. Uh, along with racing elements, because you get to drive Bond's cool cars and other vehicles. Cool. Now, what is a Bond moment in the game? So, a Bond moment is anything that's like really cool in the game. Um, it can be anything from kind of like taking out enemies um, with like one shot, like a couple. But the best one is you also get credit for macking on the ladies. Sweet. There's one level where you're walking around and there's a woman on a table and you get a point for going over and massaging. So uh, it pretty much sounds a whole lot like a Bond movie. Uh, do they have uh, any other voice talent in the game? Is it Willem Dafoe? Uh, who else is in the game? They got the entire cast. They got Chris Brosnan, Judy Dench, John Cleese. Cool. Um, they also have you know, the, the celebrity guest stars. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have Shannon Elizabeth, they have Willem Dafoe, they have Richard Phil's Jaws, they even have Maya, who did the theme song, which oh, cool. is kind of cool. Great, thanks Ricardo. Now we turn to executive editor Greg Kasavin, who knows why Thief is one of the greatest games of all time. Thief the Dark Project is easily one of the greatest games of all time. It came out in the same year as games like The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Metal Gear Solid, and Half-Life, and StarCraft, and all these really great games, and yet Thief stands as one of the most memorable of them all. I have a special place in my heart for this game because it's the first game that I gave above a 9 to, at least the first PC game, and uh, it, it, it really just blew me away in how atmospheric it was and, and how innovative its, its gameplay was. Uh, this was really the first and, and still one of the only first-person stealth action games where you're not just trying to shoot people or anything, even though you have this bow, you're just trying to creep up on them, knock them out, take their stuff, get through these heavily defended and really strange locations, and uh, the game just had this really outstanding plot and a very cool main character for good measure. It's one of those games where I talk to pretty much anyone who's played it, and they still remember it quite clearly. They, they remember Garrett, the main character. Uh, they remember his crazy bow and its ability to shoot water arrows and rope arrows and all these uh, weird gadgets and such. Uh, they remember the really unusual level design and, and uh, the really unique a climactic uh, part of the game where you happen upon this very unusual plot. Uh, it's, it's more than just uh, robbing people blind. So Thief the Dark Project has originality, it has innovation, it has all the things that you'd expect one of the greatest games of all time to have, and it holds up quite well today also. I guess that game was cool. Cool in a really good game that you should play kind of way. Not cool as in a we're going to force a number down your throat and make you think it's a vowel, like Atari's doing with Driver 3. Sure, it reads weird, but if accepting it lets us hang out with Michelle Rodriguez and Michael Madsen, well, we won't complain too much. I'm Martin Edmondson, Managing and Creative Director of Reflections. We've put around three years of work um, into Driver 3. In fact, if you take the physics engine that went, of course, into Stuntman first, it's actually more like five years. Uh, so a huge amount of work, and the team size right now, we're around uh, right on 100 people. So there's three cities, we've got 156 miles of drivable road, and on top of that a lot of um, back alleyways and parks and so on that you can drive that are not marked on the map that are on top of that. 
35,400 individually placed buildings. It's, it's compared to driver one and two, it's just massive. I became involved with the project because I told um, my agency at the time that I wanted to do voiceovers for video games because I thought it would be fun. My character is uh, Carlita and she basically uh, smuggles uh, vehicles, really nice, luxurious vehicles back and forth from places like Europe to the States and she sells them, makes tons of money off of it. It's a fun process. It's a great process. It's, um, it's collaborative, you know, you have a director and you have a, you know, they, I could watch the characters and the way they animated me and stuff like that. And, I have five sons and they play a lot of video games, so I thought they'd get a kick out of seeing me in the game. We promised it to you at the beginning of the show, and it's here. Thanks to the convenience bestowed upon us by our new studio, we have the time to cram even more into the show. So let's dim the lights for our new segment, GameSpot Live's Now Playing. Thanks, Jeff. Welcome to the first installment of GameSpot Live's Now Playing. Here on Let's GameSpot, you learn all about current releases, the latest previews and reviews, and the top headlines found on GameSpot News. What about all those crazy moving pictures that go up on the site every day? Did you know that there are more than 450 video reviews on the site? That GameSpot hosts movies for more than 2,700 different games. With all that content to sift through, we're going to use this segment to make sure you catch all the best stuff, be your account basic or complete. Staking an early claim at longest gameplay movie of 2004 is Konami's 27 minute long trailer for their upcoming GameCube game Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snake. It's entirely composed of the game's new cinematics directed by Japanese film director Ruhuya Kitamura. Since the new cutscenes are considered the major drawing point of The Twin Snakes, consider this 27 minutes of spoilers. Other new movies available to GameSpot Basic members include a pair of Dueling Jedi for everyone still interested in Star Wars Galaxies and Empire Divided, and the first official footage of Tenshu, Return from Darkness. For all you GameSpot Complete members, be sure to check out our 17-minute interview with Takamasa Shiba, producer of Square Enix's Drakengard. Or if you prefer Guns Over Dragons, Andrew Park has a preview of Far Cry. Finally, see if Alex Navarro survives Big Rigs, Over the Road Racing, the latest in GameSpot's list of games you should never, ever, 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 ever play. For more on all the movies that are now playing on the site, click on over to the GameSpot Live page. Back to you, Jeff. That looks like some good stuff for the entertainment-seeking half of my brain. But Tim Tracy, I need to balance my mind with some cold, hard news facts. Thanks, Jeff. Electronic Arts and UK-based Free Radical Design have announced a distribution and publishing agreement for the next game in the Time Splitter series. No information on the game itself has been released at this time, except that it will feature online play and is currently scheduled for worldwide release in 2005. Platforms for the game have not been announced, but will bring you more information on the game as it becomes available. And in weeks of speculation, Nintendo announced that it is launching a new portable gaming system, the Nintendo DS a double-screen game deck that it will formally unveil at this year's E3 in Los Angeles. No pictures of the system were released. Featuring two separate 3-inch TFT LCD display panels, two individual processors, and up to a gigabit of memory, the DS will give players a general view of the game on one screen while letting them zoom into the action on another. Nintendo's announcement made no mention whether the Nintendo DS would support GBA or GameCube games or would require a third software format. However, Nintendo did say the DS would be marketed separately from the company's existing Nintendo Game Boy Advance portable system and Nintendo GameCube home console, indicating that a new storage media is to be more likely. The Nintendo DS is scheduled to go on sale in late 2004. GameSpot will have more details on the system as they become available. Now finally this week, the ESRB has officially rated Tecmo's upcoming action game Ninja Gaiden as M for Mature. While the rating could potentially limit the audience of the game, a Tecmo representative looked at the news in a positive light and was quoted as saying, Ninja Gaiden is a fully blooded action game from start to finish and is not for the weak of heart. Developed by Team Ninja, the highly anticipated Xbox exclusive game is set for release on the 10th of February. We'll bring you more on the game as it's available. That's all the news I see. Back to you, Jeff. It seems a certain show-sponsored parking meter got a little out of control last week and the citizens of your favorite small town in New Jersey will need years before they're ready to welcome back their prodigal son. 
Once again on the run with his traveling companion and faithful friend Answer, it's the Let's GameSpot Trivia Robot. Well, howdy, nerds. It's me, the Let's GameSpot Trivia Robot. Hitching my way down US 13 with my dog, Answer. We're on a 370 mile journey to our new home in what? You've never seen a robot dog before? Okay, so maybe I'm in the junior circuit of mad scientists, but I'm gonna build him some tail fins and paint on a sweet racing stripe. What is a racing stripe anyways? Hold on, that almost sounded like trivia. Question number one, what is a racing stripe anyways? Question number two, what is the new shopping mode in Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2? Question number three, Name two classes found in Silent Storm. Question number four. What old school James Bond villain appears in 007 Everything or Nothing? Question number five. What game would you like to see on the Nintendo DS? I know what you are saying. Trivia Robot, ain't the hitchhiking illegal? Indeed it is. But I purchased my amnesty from Johnny Law by squealing on these three nerds that picked me up back in Delaware. Even when it's a dash yellow, you still gotta walk the line. I walk the line. You are welcome. Send your answers along with your mailing address to TriviaRobot at GameSpot.com by Monday, January 26th. And we'll randomly pick some of you to win the official Let's GameSpot travel game. It's, it's just a pad of paper. But what a pad! And make sure y'all hit up the site for the latest news, previews, and reviews from the vaunted stronghold of gaming because this show is going free range, baby. Until next week, I'm Jeff Gersman, reminding you that just because you keep losing at Capcom vs. SNK2, there's no reason to call me all those horrible names over the headset. Good night. That's my that's my dual screen